that is something really wonderful. So if you see a companies that did really well, even in India, whether it was HDFC or Hero Honda or Infosys, in their growth phases, you could see that they were able to deploy large Lot amounts of, of capital at incrementally very high value. Good. Absolutely. Ramdeji, there's a question for you from Chandrakan Udani from Kolkata. Uh, he wants to know what investment mistakes you made before you became successful. What? We are doing mistakes even now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a mistake is the only way you learn. So, uh, the, I mean, the 200 companies I told, is that not a colossal mistake? Absolutely. You know? So, we were buying useless companies in, uh, I mean, in 92 when the, uh, this bull run happened, Harshamaita bull run happened, we went to, we thought that uh, banks are the safest place, cheapest uh, stocks and the scam was found in banks only. So, how, how, how much bigger can you, I mean, your first few crores you put in the banks and it just got evaporated. So, there are mistakes and mistakes where, uh, you know, uh, particularly chasing the stock. One of the companies, uh, Bhatta only mentioned at 200, I didn't, I mean, I didn't buy and it went down, it kept on going up, 500, 600, 700, 1000 and then I couldn't resist myself. Then I went and bought at 1100 and I think that was the highest price. And <laughs> finally, you know, I had to sell in three months time at 300 rupees. So, you don't chase, if what you don't understand, you don't become greedy on that stock and don't keep chasing. If you decided you are not, you don't understand, just be it. Let only Bhatta make money. I mean, <laughs> so I think uh, you keep committing all kinds of mistakes. But I think the big thing about mistakes, is since Ramdesh, he has the, you know, the humility and the, I mean, very few people have this. I think this is one of the things that makes him what he is. But the great thing about mistakes, and again, I, it's true of Durgesh as well. I mean, tremendous humility. And that's what leads to really outstanding investment managers. But is not to get bogged down because you've made a mistake. Oh. If, you're, if you've chosen investing as a career, you're going to make mistakes. The thing is not to be in denial about them. To accept that you've made a mistake and then to try and learn from it and improve. But Warren Buffett in one of his letters said this. Mistake is not something that has gone wrong. Mistake is something that has gone wrong from which you did not learn. Correct. That's it. That's really? absolutely I think yeah. that's, I mean, I, my own example is a shining example of that. I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I consider myself blessed. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Sham Jalani from Ahmedabad. Could you uh, share with us some gruesome stocks you bought and only realized later? <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> You're asking me? Yeah, I can give a list of, list you know, of for the next five years. I mean, my list yeah. is endless. But I'll tell you one that both he and I bought. Okay. Yeah, because I, this one stands out in my mind. And it's no, it's, it doesn't reflect on Ramdev. I think it was the times. This was way back in the early 80s. It was, I think, in the late 80s. It was 88 or, it was a company called Suraj Diamonds. And we were so excited when we were buying Suraj Diamond, you can't believe it. Both of us. So, and the mistake there was that this had none of the things we spoke about. No competitive advantage, commoditized business. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, 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 there was nothing about it that was exceptional. No cash flow. Millions of people in diamonds, in that, you know, that cutting and converting. So, but we loved it. It was sasta. I think the big mistake, if you think about it, was, and same as Buffett and Graham, in the beginning Ramdev, I think, and this is part of the evolution, he used to like Sasta companies. And he graduated from that very quickly and that's part of the reason why he's so smart. He's a damn quick learner. He figured out that this Sasta formula alone doesn't work. So he jettisoned it. Yeah. Which is when no, he wait. met Buffett. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. please. So, yes. uh, one of the things I find, uh, Ramdev, uh, uh, about uh, Buffett is that uh, people don't talk about the insurance float that Berkshire uh, enjoys, yes. you know. So, in your view, how important is it to have a steady stream of income coming in uh, for you to have a successful uh, investing career and a great track record? Yeah. So, as far as, see, if you look at even Buffett's career, he is more than float, I mean float is a very unique uh, thing which he has collected and that's why 
he says, if in a ship, both of them are there, him and Ajit Jain, and if you have to bring back only one, please get Ajit Jain back, not him. <laughs> so clearly, the float is the massive thing uh, below. I mean, negative interest cost, he got 80, 82 billion dollars, and that's uh, really allowing him to do a lot of what are called elephant shooting. Uh, but, you know, sea candy, I think the bigger thing you're asking about is the cash flow from sea candy, yes. which he bought it for 25 billion dollars way back in 73. And in that, he has made so far, I think, about 1.8 or 1.9 billion dollars of pre-tax profit. The issue is that entire profit he has used to buy other businesses, which have become so much more bigger. It's like uh, Adam and uh, something like he, he said. So the issue is that, you know, uh, uh, for a successful investing, uh, capital is also important. And the steady flow, inflow of uh, unencumbered cash or capital is, uh, I mean, you have to get it from somewhere. So you have to have the running business. And that's the beautiful, uh, beautiful thing about uh, Berkshire Hathaway. He has cash cows like, uh, say, uh, your uh, Seas Candy or this float. So all those cash he has been able to deploy in wonderful uh, uh, this thing. So here uh, at our end, say like, say broking. I mean, that, that allowed us in the beginning to, I mean, we started from zero. So from where you get the free cash flow? Broking might not be a great business, at least Bhatta, Bhatta doesn't think so. But he, it is a great business for a person with zero capital to get a free cash flow. You start with zero capital, with some competence, and uh, it gives you free cash flow to build the initial capital. After that, once you have the significant amount of money, you have you got into power of compounding, then you can build on. But I think, like even if you see the bigger empires here, like Tatras or Builders, they have one or two huge cash cows. And that keeps the entire group going. Thank you. Yeah. How do you avoid a value trap? This is uh, Tejinder Patel from Ahmedabad. Durgesh Bhai, how do you avoid a value trap? I agree that uh, this is going to be a very tricky thing. And uh, it's very important to understand that value defined by a particular ratio can be a risk. So if you see over time, as uh, Sanjay talked about it, that either you look across companies, across a particular industry, or across a period of time. And then you go back to see a few other things. Like a simple example I give you is that tax payment, there was a company where a company uh, performance was shown to be very good. And I remember Sunil Sunganya coming and talking to us and saying that, Iska tax nahi bhara gaya hai. Iska to mere ko chalan dekhna hai. And I was shocked to see the next year, the company did write back the tax that they had shown that they paid the earlier year. So it is true that you have to find out in detail when you see a balance sheet which is very compelling to make sure that it's not a value trap. So I would think that when you look at tax payment, when you look at uh, capital employed keeping on expanding, because many companies we've seen who keep on expanding their capital employed, they keep on expand. You don't know if the profit and loss money is coming from the balance sheet or is it coming out of operations. Yeah. So that would be another indicator, I would guess. And uh, the third thing would be that cyclical profits. Because in many cases, you will find that profits are a one-time effect. And that's why the stock looks dirt cheap. If I can add to that, I, yeah, I think, again, simple way to identify this in a mathematical format is over long periods of time, value traps, there'll be growth in sales and growth in profits, but no growth in cash flow. But another type of value trap is you generally buy a undervalued stock, particularly holding companies. You buy 3,000 rupees break of value company at, say, 300 rupees and nothing happens. The underlying stuff has gone to 6,000 rupees, but the stock stays at 300 rupees. Now it has become even more cheaper. Now what do you do? This is a classic trap. I mean, you are a value practitioner, and in this world, I mean, you don't have unlimited patience. And uh, that stock keeps becoming cheaper and cheaper. No mistake of the company. Just the market is not liking that stock. Then what do you do? The frustration, like say, most of the holding companies, uh, you know, I bought, uh, say, uh, 
Maharashtra yeah. scooters. Yeah. So it was a break up value was uh, break up value was about fifteen hundred rupees. I bought it four fifty. Stock went to three thousand rupees. Bajaj Auto went to three thousand rupees, and the, this stock came down four hundred rupees to three hundred rupees. <laughs> now what do you do in this kind of situation? So I think it's a at times. So you have to be when you're practicing deep value, you have to be very clear how much illiquidity and how much patience you have. So for deep value practicing, you need deep patience. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if one is there and other is not there with you, I think you are in deep trouble. Deep trouble. Then you'll have deep losses. <laughs> deep value without deep patience leads to deep losses. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Buffett has never invested in technology stocks. Whereas oh, he has, has IBM. 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 Okay. And it shows that he doesn't understand technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the context of uh, Indian e-commerce, more and more money is being deployed into e-commerce businesses. And like uh, Mr. Dugresh said, it's coming from the balance sheet, not coming from operations. So where do you see this, uh, you know, obviously there are more users of e-commerce as we keep going forward. And where do you see the story unfolding getting, and where, yeah, exactly. where do we see it generating cash? Yeah, I think, see, I think everybody will have a different view, but I am very clear what I don't understand. Even with lot of, uh, I mean, two, three, four interviews you do because everybody likes it so much, you go and meet the management. After that also you don't understand anything, you better go back to your, what you understand. You know, because for making money you need 10, 15, 12, 15 ideas. I mean, you can't make money what you don't understand. If the companies don't make money, if you think that company is not going to make money, fundamentally, how will you make money? That's my firm belief. What comp how much money you make in the stock market? As much as the company makes money. People think they can make more money than what the company makes by buying low and selling high. It's so, a complete so Ramdev, Can I just stop you here yeah. for one second? Sure, sure. So, are you saying that one should never try to find the next Amazon? No, if you know, Amazon still makes very little money. Yeah. And it's yeah. 25 years or 20 years into its history. Yeah. But if you were a stockholder of Amazon, mm -hmm. you've done pretty damn well. No, but you are become a stockholder. First you bought it. Correct. So at the time of buying, that is important, no? Yeah. That person has understood how Amazon is going to make money and how much time it is going to take and the price at which he's getting. And that's why he bought it at that price. So for him, it is perfect. I'm not saying uh, it is not a good idea for everybody. If you understand what is going to happen to this company, you must go and buy. It's a, I mean, why there is a buyer and seller in the market? You think uh, it is going to go up and I think it is going to go down or it is not going to go anywhere. That's why I sell and you buy. There are two-way trade in the market. So clearly, uh, and the person who wins is the person who understands the future of the company. Because in equity markets, what you are buying is not the past. You are, you are buying the future. So you have to understand the future of the company. Very clearly in your mind. Sometimes you get to understand, sometimes you don't. So you don't have to sweat because some other, see you don't, so because my neighbor is making money, you can't be chasing that stock. Correct. That's right. This is what happened in 2000 actually. If you think about it, in 2000, people were counting, you know, how many vi people visited the website and how many hits were there, and, but they were not counting, you know, how much money it was making. Dogs are us, grocers are us, toys are us, my uncle is us. You know, this was the fad. These were businesses that had, half of them didn't have, uh, no one had profits, more, some didn't have revenues. And that's the challenge here. The challenge is to understand over time, you know, what these businesses are going to do that is going to allow them to be of real relevance and valuable in an economy that has changed. Like in India, I think retailing is changing fundamentally. Indian retailing is going through a huge metamorphosis. And that's why so many people are so excited that they're paying, you know, six billion dollars to own a company that doesn't earn six rupees. So if you did a PE multiple, the PE multiple would be one billion. You know, but these, these are fundamentally changing the way you do business. And therein lies the challenge. If you can figure that out and other people can't, you'll be fine. But be damn sure that you figured it out. I think biggest learning of Buffett is the discipline. Yeah. Discipline of 
uh, not swinging the bat on every ball. I think that's the, the biggest learning from Buffett that you buy uh, or you act in the investment field only when you are sure and you understand. Because here in the market, it's so liquid, there are 5,000 horses running every day at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we want to do something interesting every day. I but the main thing is who's the jockey, yaar? Huh? It's not a dependent on the jockey. It's not a dependent on the jockey. घोड़ा का कोई मतलब ही नहीं है। But it goes more seriously again to address your question. See, when you have a business that has a dramatic rate of change, where things are changing constantly, okay, then it defies the Buffett idea that you want to buy businesses which generate cash flow and have very little change, where change is very, you know, it doesn't change over years. And I think that's what Ramdev is saying, and that I think Durgesh made the same point, you know. That, that the rate of change determines, you know, how, how easy or difficult it is to make a mistake. And that's why I think businesses like the ones you were speaking about can have tremendous upside, but they're anti-percentage. Because you're swinging. You just need to have a wafer-thin connection, a snick, and there'll be a wicketkeeper waiting behind and you get only one chance. On that note, thank you very much, Sanjoy. Uh, thank you very much, Durgesh Bhai, Ramdev Ji, for sharing all the insights. Can we have a big round of applause for all the panelists? Thank you. Thank you for having us. Once again, thank you, panelists. I think it was a very insightful uh, session, a lot of learnings. I think most of us, we'll, we'll, we will need to uh, see the video recording a couple of times to get real hang of all the learnings you know, we've heard. Uh, may I requ request Mr. Oswal and Mr. Ramdev Agarwal to kindly felicitate the uh, panelists. So thank you friends uh, for gracing this occasion with your presence. Uh, we have served cocktails and dinners uh, uh, at the terrace of this building. So please join us for uh, dinner. Thank you so much once again. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.